to start this off, we have a split screen here where I'm looking at the victim effectively on the left and the attacker on the right. So the attacker is using a tool called Evil Navy and C, which is a way of basically tricking the victim into controlling the attacker's own browser through VNC based techniques. So we're going to be phishing them. You can see on the left, they've already visited this strange URL, the definitely not phishing.com, and they're seeing an Okta login page. So we're trying to fish their legitimate Okta tenant, and we're doing that with an attacker in the middle technique using evil no VNC. So what we're going to see now is that from an attacker's perspective, they've got this running and they've got their own browser and that's being controlled by the victim without them knowing. So we're going to see their actions mirrored at the moment. And the victim on the left is just entering their credentials, thinking they're talking to their legitimate Opta tenant. And they are talking to their legitimate Opta tenant. It's just being proxied via the attacker's browser. So now they're going to be prompted after entering their credentials for their MFA code. So in this case, they're using a one-time password for an app. They're going to go and enter that and they'll then successfully log in and it will be their legitimate Okta tenant. Now, this is an important point because this, this is what they expect to see. This is actually their tenant. They're seeing the apps they would normally see. So it obviously gives an air of authenticity, but the attackers see in this as well, because what the victim doesn't realize is they're just remotely controlling the attacker's browser. And at this point, well, there's lots of things an attacker could do. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the victim off. I'm going to say, do you know what? I want to take control of my browser now. Thanks for logging in for me. And so this may be obviously the stealthiest mechanism, but from the victim's perspective, they've just been cut off. Looks like the page has failed. But what's really happened is the attackers just cut them off in their browser. And now from this point, I don't need the victim to be involved anymore. As an attacker, I can just go back to my browser, which is now logged in, which the victim kindly did for me. So in this case, I could do things like look for evidence of Okta SWA, where there's actually passwords involved. So I might be able to reveal those and steal passwords for different apps to then laterally move to other apps as well. Or I could just log in via SAML to other SAML connected apps that, that are behind proper SSO. There's lots of things I could do. Or I can actually tear down the no VNC connection if I don't need that anymore and actually just get some other credentials out of that if I wanted to. Okay, so we got the passwords um, for the account as well. And then we also got the cookies. I could take these, import these into another browser and reestablish that connection and uh, that session that we saw just then. So that's the initial access phase kind of over with some credential theft as well. So what we're going to see next is we're going to focus on the post exploitation phase. So we've gained access to their account. Now we're just going to focus on where the attacker, we're logged into the victim's account and we're going to do more. We've already stolen some credentials, but we want to do more. The user might figure out they've been compromised. We might get kicked out of this Okta account eventually. So let's do what we can while we've got the time. So in this case, we're going to start by accessing some apps. So I'm going to log into Shortcut, which is an up to SWA app. So it's authenticating for me. This is a ticket management system. And I'm going to say, okay, this looks interesting to me. But now I just want to make sure I can maintain access to this in future, even if I lose access to Okta. So I'm going to go and see if there's a way of backdooring it. And I'm going to use simple techniques here. I'm going to say, okay, this supports API tokens. Let's create my own backdoor token. Then I can access everything I need by the API. It doesn't look like the user uses the API. They'll probably never notice this. Now I can come back to shortcut directly via the API whenever I want to. I don't need Okta access anymore. So if I get kicked out of Okta, I'm good. We'll now move on to Google Drive. Here we're interested in files. Let's say, okay, I'm really interested in the finance information. I'm not going to check it out now, but what I am going to do is I'm just going to create a sharing link. You've probably seen this many times before for sharing with external parties. We can make a link-based sharing link so that you don't need an account, so it can be shared easily externally. So what I'm going to do is just share that finance folder, copy that, maintain that in my own spreadsheet offline, and then I can come back to view that data via a link in the future. Then as a third application, we've gone to Expensify. So we'll say, okay, we've got this Expensify app. Similar thing, is there a way of persisting on this? Let's have a look. Okay, this supports secondary logins. So in this case, I'm going to use a technique I called ghost logins, and I'm going to add another email address for a, a Gmail account that I control, which I can then use to log in directly to this account. So again, if I get kicked out of Okta, I can actually log into this Expensify account directly using my own Gmail account. So we've just seen like laterally move into three different applications and backdooring them in three different simple ways. So we're accessing these other applications. We're also making sure that we can get back to them if we get kicked out of Okta in future, which is pretty powerful. But as a slightly more advanced example, I'm also going to look at some lateral movements to attack 
other users. So at the moment we've been laterally moving to different applications as the same user account, but I want to laterally move to other users inside the organization now. So in this case, we've targeted a finance user and whilst they aren't in central IT or central security, maybe they have administrative access to a basic financial app like this, because they are the ones that requested this and set it up. And it's been set up for SSO based authentication. So they're not an overall Okta admin or domain admin, enterprise admin, anything like that, but they are an admin of this financial application. And this has been configured to use SAML for SSO via Okta. And now I'm going to use a technique called SAML jacking, where I use SAML to do something malicious for me. Now SAML redirects users during the authentication flow. At this point, it's been configured to redirect to Okta because that's how it works legitimately. Instead, I'm going to change the SAML configuration to redirect it to my malicious evil no VNC phishing server, which we used as the initial access phase. What happens is that's going to convert this into a watering hole style attack where when other users try to get to Expensify in future, they will be automatically redirected to my phishing server. I don't need to send them a phishing link via email or anything. So we're going to see that now. If I was in Okta and I went, okay, log into Expensify for me. It takes me to Expensify and then boom, I get taken straight back to this phishing server again without me ever having clicked a phishing link. So at this point, we then may compromise more users and then we can repeat the process and iterate and spread our infection throughout the target organization.